So the update on Shanghai is I now live here. The weather is very different and weird here. It's raining all the time, and then it's hot as hell, and then it's cold and windy. It's I've only been here like a couple weeks, and it's already all these things. So it's very different. There's a lot more English here. The people are uh, quite a bit different than Beijing. There's, there's pluses and minuses to all of it. And uh, just like there's pluses and minuses to having cats, one of the minuses is you get fur all over you. Uh, so you're constantly doing live streams with fur all over your chest because you forget to roll your chest with one of those little sticky things and uh, look like you're wearing a fur coat half the time. So Shanghai is a bit like that. There's good, there's bad. Personally, um, if it was just up to me and I didn't have to deal with trying to find English speakers, I would probably just live in some remote mountain somewhere, you know, near Du Yan, just uh, living off of hot pot all day. Uh, but I do need to kind of face the realities of finding a team and everything that that entails. Uh, my Chinese is uh, probably better than you guys think, but it's not good enough really for me to comfortably be communicating professionally with people uh, all day long every day. And one of the things is the other day I was outside at night and I was like sweating. I was uh, basically like a, a boiled egg. And I was telling people, man, it's really hot and muggy down here, humid. And people said, oh, dude, it's only May. Just wait. It's going to get way worse. So we'll see how I get on with that. Shanghai is crazy. The language is different, you know, um, than Beijing. A lot of Shanghai Hua here, Shanghai dialect. Um, but it's cool. I think Chinese people think of Shanghai in one way. Um, but I don't think it's exactly that way. You know, Shanghai people get accused of, like, kissing you know kissing butt to foreigners and everything i don't really see that in the way that they think it is i think they get that idea because the menus are all in english and a lot of people speak english and there's more of a foreign service industry here that's correct but the average person to me seems to have basically the same type of attitude as they as they do in beijing towards foreigners i think that that's a little bit of a misconception um but that's not super interesting so i'm in shanghai I have started a company. It is now officially done. I am beginning the process of posting ads for hiring. And I'm aware that some of you guys messaged me and emailed me. So I want to kind of go over that now. I got something like 150 emails from, uh, from viewers who wanted to help out in any way that they could. I had to break them out into sections, categories. Some of those people were in Shanghai. It was about 60 or something. And some of the people were not in Shanghai. And some of the people, I couldn't really tell where they were because they didn't say. <laughs> and of those people, some wanted to help me with editing. And some wanted to just help me with research or whatever. There's many different types of emails I'm sure you can imagine. So I have emailed back 10 people in Shanghai. And of those 10, only three have gotten back to me. Two of which I've met with. That's the current status. If you're in Shanghai and you, mess you emailed me, check your email. And... This is going to sound, you know, not great, but please don't ask me to add your WeChat because I, I mean, hundreds of people are asking me to add their WeChat. I just, I can't do it. But I will generally meet up with you in Shanghai if I feel like you're qualified and interesting. You know, I've already met up with people. Uh, I do want to hire. This is real. This is a real job, by the way. So if you're Chinese and you're looking for the uh, official employment status with your benefits and all that kind of stuff, you will get that. If you're a foreigner, uh, you will be able to get a work visa, all that kind of stuff. I don't really have a preference, just as long as you can speak English, get stuff done, and have the qualifications. I'm not willing to hire someone who's not qualified, especially for editing, because the goal of this hire is to reduce my time spent, not to train somebody, because that's a lot of time. Um, of course, I can help you with the more advanced edits, as I've taught myself how to do this over these last few years. So I have some proficiency, especially with, uh, with Premiere and a little bit with DaVinci Resolve, which I don't use much, but it's a good program. And some other things like that, Photoshop and other, other tools that I use. But... Generally speaking, when it comes to editor, you have to be a good editor already. I'm not really interested in somebody who has uh, some practice with editing. It doesn't help me much. So the positions that I'm really in need of um, are someone who can get stuff done, like a producer or somebody who, um, 
I don't want to say assistant, but kind of like a higher level assistant, somebody who can really get everything done. Like if I say, hey, I need to talk to, you know, these companies and get this this idea from them about, you know, making T-shirts or whatever it is that I want to get involved with or, hey, help me go through these candidates and, and interview them and get the first round done, whatever it is. This is a very small company, obviously, so it's most of the jobs are going to be your job plus a bunch of other stuff. So that's one position that's going to be very hard for me to fill because you need to speak English well enough to really get what I'm saying, but you need to have that uh, independent, hard charger, can do, can get it done attitude. Uh, so that's one position. When I have that position filled, things like emailing me about uh, helping and all that kind of stuff will be much smoother to deal with. When people message me about, um, for example, wanting to help me with research or wanting to help me in this way or that way, some miscellaneous assistance, like somebody messaged me saying they want to translate my videos into Korean, etc. It's actually more work for me to set you up to do that than it is to, you know, than, than I can handle. So I need help with that. So that's the first position that I'm, I'm actively hiring. So if you know someone who is physically located in Shanghai already, who speaks good English and, um, and has the type of attitude that they don't need everything spelled out for them exactly of what to do, um, they can get stuff done and they can really be a hard charger. In the post-production industry, this would be somebody like uh, a production assistant or even a producer. Um, there's other names for this type of position in other industries, but that's, that's the one I'm most familiar with. If you emailed me, first of all, I did read your email. I don't have time to respond to hundreds of emails right now, unfortunately, uh, as I'm still moving and setting everything up, my business, all this stuff. But um, if you live in Shanghai, I may be getting back to you over the next few weeks. Um, but preferably I will hire somebody uh, through an employment hiring type of site or really get somebody who's, who's well qualified. That should really kind of give you the basic idea. I'm trying to hire someone that's a producer essentially and somebody that's an editor. Now beyond that, once I have this producer really dialed in and is really you know, getting stuff done and, and I'm able to start uh, covering my current bases, and maybe even starting to expand a bit into the areas that I have planned, because I have a lot planned. Then what I want to do is be able to start to corral people who are interested in helping in smaller ways, maybe in their part-time or just here and there, because there's a lot of stuff that people can do. But from my point of view, again, it's, it's a lot of overhead work to get you set up to give me a little bit of help. And so it would be a lot better if I have somebody to corral a bunch of people who might be interested and kind of do a crowdsourced help. There's certain things that I can do with that. If you are a Python programmer um, with knowledge of URL lib and, and beautiful soup and you know what these words mean, LXML and you know HTML parsing, you know what mechanize is, you know about scraping, you know about automation in particular, not necessarily the object-oriented side of things, but how to automate and get stuff done. There may be ways that you can help as well because uh, I currently write all my scripts for uh, scraping and, and pulling things off of the internet that I need, images, videos, all kinds of stuff, documents. I have very specific needs, so it's a little bit weird and a little bit harder to, to find, but I do have some optimism there.